Okay, so we're back. We're in the main discussion topic for this week's episode, and I know uh, we got pretty serious there uh, for a second. Uh, talking about serious topics, uh, you know, I like sometimes to incorporate fun and in, in my jovialness when I can, but you know, it's it's just a lot of fuck shit going on. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week with more stuff, but let, let's let's talk about um, the reaction from last week's episode. So. First, before we get into some of the responses that I got, um, I just want to say thank you for all uh, the tweets, the comments, the calls, the texts, everything. When I when I sat down to record last week's episode, I had a completely different topic in mind. Uh, so it's it's funny how organic stuff happens when you're called to do something because me speaking about it as, as well as it all came together was not the plan. It kind of was like thought vomit, word vomit, how that all came out. Um, but I didn't initially talk about it. It's something that only a couple of people have ever heard me really say. And I think talk about out loud. Um, because it's, it, you know, it, it's, it's hard. And as well-spoken as I am sometimes as I, I, emotionally intelligent as I can be, you know, the thing that has always been hard for me to talk about, um, while I can identify my emotions very well and process them and deal with them myself, it's been hard for me to verbalize. I don't, it's not about having a safe space because I can honestly, honestly say there are a lot of people uh, that I feel that safe uh, space in that I can talk about it, uh, talk about it with them. I just, I haven't really felt the need, but you know, after it was brought to my attention, like, hey, you did this whole series and divorce, you really didn't get to hear yours. I was like, ah, I have to at least comment on it. And in me thinking I have to at least comment on it, turn into a whole segment. Um, but the conversations that I've had specifically with with men from that is what is powerful. I think that uh, as men, we need to feel like we have a safe space. Uh, we need to be able to talk to one another. And sometimes we need to be able to see other black men opening up and talking about things before we can feel like we can talk about it as well. So all that happening, loved it. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much more than you would ever know. But let's get into some of these responses from that episode. Uh, first one, this one is from DeAndre. Uh, this one is, I needed to hear this because depression is real and many people don't understand the depths of it. It's hard to come out of as I'm dealing with it right now. Knowing there's a brighter side at the end of it helps me. There's definitely a brighter side. I think that that's with all people who face depression. It's sometimes hard to realize that this is not your forever. This is just your now. Everything has a season. And unfortunately, depression is one of those seasons that some, that some of us go through. Some people will probably go through life and never feel depression. Hats off to those people. But for a lot of us, depression is a season that we go through. But it but it's not forever. It's not it's not going to be everlasting. It's just a season, and we can make it through that like we make it through everything else. I think that we overall sometimes can feel crippled by that depression because depression isn't good. Like we welcome so many good feelings that when the bad ones come, it's hard to know how to cope with them. We as men, especially black men, aren't really sometimes given the space to feel, let alone know how to how to feel through a thing like depression. So that can take some time and take some work. And, you know, I'm glad that through me talking about it, I could help anyone. So even if that was the only message I got, I want to thank you uh, for that. And I'm glad that I can be help in assisting you getting through that time the work is going to be hard um it's going to be long but it's going to be more than worth it that's all i can say i can promise you that it's going to be more than worth it let's get into this next one um this one is from c note um who was actually on the great pill podcast make sure you go and listen to that it was a great conversation um i'm going to get off these dating sites and stop making time for these women that don't even grab my attention the correct way. I have to trust God in that area. I've been failing because I've been trying to do it in myself. Listen, that's powerful. And I think something that I said in that episode when I said it was something, that marriage was something I put together rather than God putting it together. And I know everyone's not emotional, not religious, I should say. But I think often we try to force things as humans, whether you're you're uh religious or not we try to force things to happen because we either feel like we should be in a relationship we feel like we should be further along in our life we feel like it's time to get married we feel like why are we just alone or sometimes it's just out of loneliness and we force things to happen rather than let things come to us the key thing is i think when you focus that top that and working on you you'll be surprised at how much stuff comes to you that you didn't even think you weren't necessarily looking for but you appreciate it that much more because it came naturally 
it came in its own will um so yeah we we and i think too is like it's part of you know our ego sometimes and we talked about ego with trav uh, a couple of episodes ago but it's part of that for us to try to kind of force things to happen whether they be career not just relationships whether they be our careers or certain jobs you try to force things to happen and then we get knee deep in it and realize did i even really want this shit you feel me um and so i think that that's an interesting thing um and we got to stop doing things by ourselves you know they say it takes a village i know they specifically used to raise a child um in, in that phrase but it really does take a village to just to to sometimes cope with life and you have to build your village your circle your tribe whatever you call it um and have solid people around you that are going to help you get better uh even if it's through like osmosis in a way not directly with you throwing all your problems on them and them saying this is the steps that you need to do but just being there sometimes having people around you just hopes and it just makes you feel good let's get into the next one i've been divorced for years and after hearing cj's episode i know that i need to not just say i'm going to let it go but to put it in action i'm preventing my own self from happiness with a man who loves me because of not letting go mentally of the hurt i want to be happy and i know i have to let it go listen that is i i, I there's nothing more i really have to say about that we have to let the hurt go ultimately all hurt is right is growth it hurts to grow it's called growing pains for a reason right so sometimes hurt is just that it is a reason for us to grow it is go us growing through that whether it's growing from situations and bad relationships whether it's growing away from people whether it's growing out of sometimes yourself and all your own shit that you have going on but usually within hurt can be growth and sometimes we just focus on the hurt and that's when we get caught in that will of depression when we, if we use that hurt to kind of fuel our growth then we can be off in a better place i want to thank you for that that's um yeah the responses to this episode are just are so fucking humbling that it's ridiculous let's get into the next one um i like that he's upfront and honest about his life he's a good looking man too but i know that people like to hide parts of their lives and bottle it up so i like that he's upfront and blunt about what he went through um yeah i think and you know that's one of the the common comments i've gotten from that episode is just saying that how did i how do you get to the point of just being able to talk about that so openly and the thing is that i've grown past it it's it's and that's part of the reason why i don't think to talk about it always so too when when divorce comes up is because the things that i've went through in my life the dark times of, of feeling like i didn't want to i didn't want to be alive of you know being depressed that i just didn't want people around me i didn't want to be around people um it it was it, it came with self-realization right once i realized that that's what i was going through and that's what i was feeling and that's why i was blocking out certain people and i've affected so many relationships it's it's easier to talk about i think like i'm not ashamed of anything that's happened in my life not a goddamn thing um a lot of it I, and i always say i don't i don't have any regrets either uh, even going through depression, even staying in marriage so long that I wasn't happy in, um, even in breaking down of relationships, both good relationships and bad relationships. I don't regret it at all because everything happens for a reason. Um, and sometimes that just because a person is good, it doesn't mean that they're good for us um, in both friendships and relationships. And sometimes you're not just because you're not a, a bad person doesn't mean that you're good for other people either. So like usually if, if someone is out of your life or you're taking um or you have to remove yourself from somebody's life or they remove themselves from your life it's ultimately for the for a greater good whether it's for them or for you and how can you be mad at that once you start realizing that if they had to get away from you to get to a point of being or coming to some self-realization or getting to a peace why be mad at that if you love that person and if you truly cared for them it shouldn't just be based upon whether they're in your life or not it should be based upon all right if they if that's what they need to do to be happy then go and do that i, I want them to succeed in that i want to succeed in being happy too that's why you have to cut some people out of your life so yeah definitely i appreciate that as well uh this this next one uh the way he opened up and poured out his heart i needed this i have a hard time when people walk out of my life uh, when they do i try to hold on to them or a piece of them in some kind of way but after listening to this i think i can now not saying it's going to happen overnight but i can at least let the past go now one day at a time and that's all it is it's one day at a time 
uh, it's natural to miss people. It's naturally natural to have people that were in your life, especially if they were truly meaningful to you, to, to feel some form of regret or to keep trying to think through why that happened, why they aren't here, whatever, whatever's going on. But like I said, in the, after the last one, ultimately, if it's not, if it's, it's probably ultimately for the best overall, it's for the betterment of your life or theirs. So how can you be mad at it? But also I think we need to realize that everyone isn't meant for all seasons of our life where you're going. They may not be meant to go with you where they're going. You may not be meant to go with them. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We got to stop looking at leaving people behind as a, an inherent bad thing. We, of course, we naturally want to take everyone with us. We want to have everyone that we love, everyone that we've ever cared about all continue to go forth from the point of now where we are until when we die. But it's just, it's just not that feasible. Um, and it's okay. Um, and especially like when it comes to relationships, when people walk away from you, you have to think sometimes that means that they're walking away because they know that they can't give you what you need. And if that's the case, whether they did it right or they did it wrong, but if in that realization, if they couldn't give you what you need, what are you really losing for? Yeah, you missed the first, you missed the last, you missed the times, but there was something in you or something in them that they couldn't fulfill. So they had to go. So we got to we got to learn to to accept that, keep it moving and uh, try to just be better every day at a time and appreciate the people while we have them. That's the key thing. You got to love people like they could be gone every day, because not just because they could walk out your life, you walk out of theirs because they could be taken from us at any point in time. You don't want to ever have those regrets. Um, ultimately, you got to You, you got to do what's best for you um, and sitting back, staying focused on regret will keep you in a place of always being stagnant and not able to move forward. And that's not helping you or them. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next comment we got from this, my husband and I listened to this together and we asked ourselves if there was anything we were still holding on to. We opened up to each other about going through depression before we met and how important it is to have people to help pull you out of it. We enjoyed it. Listen, <laughs> so many, so much lately. Um, and this is why I wanted to read the comments in this episode. Uh, well, from that episode is because really lately I've been getting a lot of like married couples um, saying I'm helping marriages and stuff like that. And that's it's crazy to me. Right. Um, well, I mean, I'm appreciative of it, but I really I just try to tell my story. Right. I try to share my thoughts, my opinions. Um, and if I help people along the way, then, then I'm it make it it makes it even the more better. I really just ultimately. um I ultimately, what, what I feel like I'm called to do is to help people break mental chains and bondage. And so that's what I really try to do. Um, as far as like having that conversation about, about depression um, with your partner is important because that should be your safe space, right? That should be the place that you're able to go and pour it all out. And when I say pour it all out, I don't mean pour it on them so they carry your baggage. I mean, pour it all out so that you have a form of release. And then they can help you cope with it if, if they if they can. I think also it's important that for us to be able to say to our partners, listen, we're going to listen. I can help you only so much with this. We need to go to therapy. We and make it a, make it a we thing um, instead of just, you know, some people will say, well, you need to go to therapy, uh, but make it a, try to make it a we thing. Try to make sure that, that, you know, even though you're saying that you can't help them um, with those cases, that you're still along for the ride you're still by their side going through it thick and thin being their helpmate all that because that that support that feeling like you have that is important it's needed um so yeah that's that's a i'm glad that listen to the awaken soul as a couple that's just a that's crazy to me um it it's it's i enjoy it right i i enjoy the feedback i enjoy being able to to that my little bit of uh, craziness helps people uh, weekly, but yeah, I, th I think it's important um, to open up to one another. And if you can't open up, I always I have the saying, and I know it's it's kind of, I guess it can kind of be gross. I say it on Love Less and Badass So, but um, seriously, if you listen to this, if you're if you're in a relationship and you're sleeping with somebody, if you can sit there and let them stick their whatever in you, or you stick your whatever in them. But you can't talk to them about serious shit, about depression. If you can't open up to them, if you can't be safe in 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 letting yourself be vulnerable and taking that armor off you have to wear in the world in front of them, then 
you aren't you haven't truly been naked in front of them. You haven't you what's the point? Um so yeah, I mean I think that that's important. All right, let's get into this last one. All right, this one is from Steph from the Great Pill Podcast. Uh I got to shout her out. Make sure you go and listen to the Great Pill Podcast. Um I like that the thought was put into the title because oftentimes we automatically think fall from grace instead of fall to. I like that Hayes touched on depression and some of the signs and stages of grief, death, masking the outside to hide what's going on inwardly, operating in God's purpose once you relinquish your plans, finding true happiness and joy through your calling and going to counseling. This to me was a beautiful story of how God will take your brokenness to rebuild and refine you. As always, I love the openness, honesty that we can hear, the growth, and true joy in his voice. I hope that more men know from this uh, know from this episode that it's okay to admit you're not okay, and in doing so, take a step to get counseling and rediscover who they are, why they're here, and who they're created to be. Episodes like this are what's needed because men carry so much, and sometimes they just need to know it's going to be okay and things will get better to move forward. Definitely made me look back on, on a time I was about to clock out on life and think I would have missed out on all the beauty of this journey. Can't wait, can't wait to hear the next episode. Thank you for that. Um, I think that that was, that was a lot. I appreciate that. Um, I, 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 I there was a time, you know, as much as it hates to admit that I was broken, um, I was broken as a man, I was broken as a father, uh, I was broken as a son, uh, as a brother, especially after losing Terrence. Like, there was a time where I felt like I was failing everything, and not because I actually was, because my kids would tell you I've always been a great father, my mom would tell you I've always been a great son, my siblings would tell you I've always been a supportive and loving brother. But it all started, it all was rooted in the fact that I just wasn't happy. There was so much of me that I was suppressing, that I wasn't doing um, to try to make somebody else feel like they were happy. And that's not a shot, that's just me. That, Cause that was, that was a choice that I made. So that's not on anybody else but me. But I, I, and I, this is another saying that I have, is never dim your light to make somebody else feel like they're shining. Um, because at the end of the day, I know I shine bright. I know that my presence and my calling is going to have me at a place where, you know, I do, I'm able to do some amazing things with, with my creativity and other things, um, and how I've been growing the last few years. But the thing is for anyone to stand next to me, they got to shine just as brightly as me, um, or not be, or not fear being over, overshined. Right. But you never dim your light. You never make like all the gifts that anyone's given, they were given to you because they were trusted upon you. That's why they're called gifts, right? Um, so we're all gifted a skill. We're all gifted something that specially that's our, that are, that are, that is ours. And sometimes people go their whole life without finding it. And they got, they die and they leave this earth without truly ever finding their one gift that was, that was, they're better than anyone else at, that they were given upon. Um, I'm lucky that I feel like I'm truly finally starting to move in my purpose in my 30s this one well, my 30s have been such a time of clarity um for me is that not not and not i've always said this podcast is not my purpose it's the vessel that i use for my purpose one of the vessels it was the initial vessel but now i'm able to do other things and um and, uh, and i've branched out to other areas but this was is one of the vessels that i use to deliver my purpose um I have a unique way of looking at the world. I have a unique experience uh, from other people. Not not like it's nobody else who has experiences that I have, but you know I've lived all over the world. I've lived in other countries. Uh, primarily, hell, I think just this year will be at the end of this year it will be officially now what more years lived in the states than in overseas. But that's just now. Like I'm literally just not even at that point yet. But by the end of this year, I'll be at that point. Um, but I've lived in other countries most of my life. I've seen other cultures. I've seen how stuff work. And so it's affected the way that I think. And that's why a lot of times when you hear me in this podcast, I would be like Americans. And people are like, are you or are you are not American? But I, I I didn't live here for so long. But uh, so, yeah, it, it I know that I've been blessed for that. And, I, and the way that I look at it now is that all of those steps, all of those things, all of those lessons that I was learning overseas and seeing other things and different things like I, I got to see things on a normal basis that people legit save their whole lives to go and experience. Um, 
but I was I was given that to put me in this place at an early age. I was given that to be able to have the knowledge that I have at a fairly young age. I was that that's the reason why I was given all these things. That's the reason why I was placed here to do what I'm able to do. And I think that overall, this this my third it literally because i think i started this podcast a couple of months before i turned 30 but my whole my at this point my whole 30s have basically been really t- delivering and finding my calling and my purpose um slowly but surely adding more things onto that i know i have great uh fun with photography and videography but the way that i want to go with it to tell our stories in a different way all those skills were built up slowly and when you start seeing how like that in the in that letter to say that how i was rebuilt i definitely had to re i was broken and i had to rebuild myself and the, and the person the version of cordero that exists now is so much better than the version that existed before and all the on every facet of life because i'm at peace in what i do and you hear the joy people and i've been hearing that a lot lately too that people are like you sound so excited about doing when you do the awakened soul you sound so elated you sound so like happy to be doing it and i am i'm happy every time i sit down in front of this mic because you know i i, I would say this in the episode where i talk a lot about you know tori lange and rihanna taylor and stuff but everything that i talk about is th- are things that I actually feel and talk like I'm not just talking about entertainment just because I know people are like I, I talk about what I'm called to talk about and, and the things that I feel on and that's what I use this platform for. Um, so yeah, I mean I I, I appreciate it. And I'm glad that all that came through in the episode. Again, it's it's just it's crazy to me because for just a a, a peek behind what I've what I've done lately, um, and only a couple people know this too. Is that more episodes than not that you guys hear in the Awakened Soul? I legit go in and I just sit in front of the mic, and especially when I'm by myself and I just let come out what comes out. Um, and people are like, "Oh, it sounds so well thought out and planned." And you know, I never would have been able to do that initially starting this podcast. Like I used to have notes and run sheets out the wazoo, but I challenged myself this year. I said that I wanted to be able to do more of that. Um, kind of off off the cuff type type stuff because I wanted that was a muscle. I think like everything that we do in this creative space is a muscle that we have to continually work out and flex to get better and get better. And that was something that I wanted to get better on and something that I've pushed myself to that, especially now that I've, I've forced myself a this year to, to have less guests than what I've had in previous years, just because I wanted when I did have guests, it to be more of a special thing than, oh, who's the guest this week? But then also in doing that, I was like, all right, well, how, since I don't have a guest, how can I keep these conversations fresh, easy going, easy flowing? Um, and that's by just sitting in front of the mic and, and being natural and letting what comes out, comes out, come out naturally. And it's really, really worked for me. Apparently, um, the numbers have never been higher in the Awakened Soul, which is, which is crazy. Um, but numbers aren't everything. I think more so than just the numbers that, that download number of the number of people listening, 2020 has been the most that people have reached out to me about the content and talked about and told me how it affected their life or their thinking or it reflected something that they were going through. That's what's more special to me. I can get a hundred thousand whatever downloads, but if I don't actually help anyone, it doesn't mean a goddamn thing. But it's helping. Um, and you know, the uh, still the episode that I did with my daughter Amaya more more alike than different. I still get messages about that helping other parents talk to their children that is special as hell to me as well so um as we're getting ready you know we're getting towards the the latter half of the year we're in fall haze uh time period where this is just going to be crazy um yeah we're just going to keep ramping up i wanted to uh, you know a a whole discussion topic on reading those and, and reacting to that but that episode was so special to me and the fact to see the fact that it touched and was so special to other people i wanted to do this um i probably should have released it as a special episode just to get it out the way but you know it is what it is um hopefully you guys got a lot out of it before i go though i do want to say it was my son alan's birthday on the 25th of september um so just a few days after you guys are listening uh, before you guys are listening to this um it was my son's birthday and I just want to tell the story. You know, I talk about fatherhood a lot. And, you know, I thought about having Alan on the podcast. But what we were talking about, I wasn't going to have him on 
quite yet. Maybe maybe you'll hear him in a special way next week or whatever. Uh, you guys saw him on a couple of the promo videos. That's that's my dude. But uh, uh, I see so much of me in Allen. Um, and it's funny because he's Cordero Jr., even though we call him Allen, right? And it's funny because, um, and I don't know if I've told, I think I tweeted it, but I don't think I've actually told the story in the podcast. And if this, this is a great way to end it. If this doesn't let you know, don't ever give up, this will. Is that Allen had a speech delay. Um, he didn't talk uh, very much at all. That's part of the reason why he originally uh, came to live with me is because he was able to get those services Um and then that that turned the way that it did. He was able to get those services for basically free here, um, where it was it still had a cost in Missouri. But um, through that, like he then started kindergarten a year too early. Um, uh, and, you know, his he had an IEP, uh, individualized uh, learning plan, or I don't know what the E stands for, education plan. Uh, I think that's right, educational. Whatever you guys you guys figure it out. Um, but I. I've seen him work so hard to improve his his language and his speech. And then I remember it, I, we kind of got a kick in the stomach because we took him to get evaluated and very minutely, he they thought he was going to be on the autism spectrum. Very, She said barely. She was like, I, I almost don't want to put him on, but very barely uh, am I, am I going to you know kind of kind of say he, he's probably on the autism spectrum. And so I took that um, hard at first. Because, you know, I mean, to hear that is, is hard. But then um, I started doing my research on it. I started seeing people who had very slight forms of autism, like famous actors and stuff that had gone on to have great careers and everything and, and done great things. But then this is and this is this is where the magic comes in at. Right. So then Alan, it's like it's like something kicked in his mind where you were like, oh, you guys think something's wrong with me? Hold the fuck up. Um and so to see the growth in Allen the last year, his speech has gotten way better. Um, his just everything. Allen is such an uh, a great emotional person, right? And he's such a loving and caring person. Um, and like I said, I see so much of me reflected in him of what I went through. He looks just just like me. Uh, but then I see like to see how hard he worked to get. To, to prove like, ah, oh, no, I'm fine. Y'all, y'all are tripping. Um, and then to celebrate his seventh birthday, we're, we're, we're hanging out, we're chilling. He's opening his gifts and he looks at me and the, you know, I, this is a long story, but this is just perseverance. Like, like another, because Alan went from having that speech and learning delay to now, like, he's like a math whiz. Like you can give him any problem. He kick it back off to you. Uh, like his grades are great everything's great he's gonna be a sports star at some point because the boys hand eye coordination but nonetheless i'm getting sidetracked because i could talk about my kids all day so we um so after after it's all done we're settling down it's just me and him on the couch we're watching finding nemo like i said the adrenaline of the day he looks over at me he's like daddy i was like yeah what's up Al? he's like i love you i said i love you too son he's like i just want you to know dad i was like wait what do you want me to know he's like i just want you to know that I appreciate how you never give up on me. I was like, why would I, why do you think I would ever give up on you? He was like, and he said, um, he said, well, I know I can be difficult. It was like, you never make, you never make me feel like I'm difficult. I was like, Alan, we're all difficult. I'm difficult. Everyone's difficult. He was like, well, I just want to tell you, I love you, daddy. And I just gave him a hug and I gave him a kiss when he fell asleep on the couch. But I live for my children. And to see the perseverance that Alan has gone through um, to get to where he's gotten at, at six and seven years old, I could never stop. And, you know, I always say that my motivation for why I work so hard, I saw my mom work two jobs after my parents got divorced to make sure our way of, of living did not change at all. And that has always informed my worth ethic. That's why I'm able to do so many podcasts. I'm able to do photography and directing and, and work on top of all that and be a father of four people. Um... But uh, me and Alan, well, me, me and Alan's relationship is, is, is special because we're Kendrick spirits. Um, and like I said, we're so much alike, but I can never give up when I see a six and a seven year old work as hard to prove people wrong. I can never stop working. So I'm going to always have Alan per Perseverance. Um, I may get that put on a T-shirt, but uh, that's a shout out to my son. 
Uh, whenever you go back and listen to this, baby, I love you. Um, happy seventh birthday to you. You can, I could never be prouder than what I am in my children. All of them, all four of them. Um, but I love, you know, Alan, I've seen you work so hard and you just mean so much to me. Um, that's it. This has been another episode of the Awaken Soul podcast. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Make sure you're following us at Awaken Soul Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, the Awaken Soul Pod at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave a voicemail, you can do so 614 547 2038. We're the number one podcast in the world for a reason. And this week, I'm out. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks Media. Media.